Welcome back to Closet Cosplay, the podcast where we help you create con-worthy cosplays on a closet budget. I'm LJ. And I'm Michelle. And today we are continuing talking about original characters. And we wanted to continue with a suggestion that we got in our suggestion form from Katie about her original character named Alana. Just to give you guys a little background on Alana, Alana is a D&D character, or Dungeons and Dragons, for those of you that don't remember what D&D <laughs> means. Uninitiated. So Alana was originally a D&D character that Katie has also used in LARPs, and Alana is a elven druid, if I remember correctly. Yes, that's correct. She is an elven druid. However, she is not your typical elven druid. <laughs> okay, so what is your typical elven druid, and what is Alana? Well, when everybody thinks about... An elven druid. You have a very specific picture that enters your mind. For the most part, if you know what an elf is and you know what a druid is, you are like nature, elf, elegant, beautiful, got it. And so when I think elven druid, I think like long robes and green and poised and one with nature and stuff like that. And so... Has a pet tiger, you know, things like that. Just very, yeah, (laughs) elves, you know, think of Lord of the Rings elves, but nature-y. When I was looking at this and thinking about that, she talks about how it was an elf, but... And we actually only discovered this because we were talking to her directly. I I had her say, tell me about your elf. Right. And she says she is an elven druid. However, she was not raised in elven culture, which is very important. Apparently, she was passed around to different cultures and therefore picks up little pieces here and there. So the initial thought of oh, it's this beautiful, elegant elven druid, doesn't fit with that character. She did not grow up in the culture. She just happens to be an elven druid. Exactly. And, you know, it's it's really interesting to hear the context of original characters, especially because, like we've said a couple episodes ago, your original idea, your original thing that pops into your head may not always be what ends up being the end result. Mm-hmm. The original stuff we had picked out for Alana, after we talked to Katie, we had to scratch. Yep. Which we've discussed starting from scratch again. Right. So we're all about starting from scratch. You know, we do it all the time, obviously. However, um, I think we had picked out some like more flowy ball gown, not ball gown, but just flowy fabrics and and longer things and more elegant elven detail stuff. Yes. At first, one thing, one thing Katie was pretty serious about was she doesn't want to be restricted in her movements. So no corsets. Yes. Which, you know, when I think elven fantasy stuff i immediately go to like oh i can find a really cool elven detailed corset so that's funny because i actually don't think about corsets when i think about elves i just i mean maybe not corsets when i think about elves but when i think about fantasy or like ren fair type stuff yeah. i immediately go oh corset. everybody thinks corsets right and that's the thing too is like i even even though she did not want a corset i did pose the suggestion and you can use this in a lot of different cosplays if you want a corset look without it being a functional corset Get a size bigger than a corset than you would normally get. So you can tighten it down, but it's not actually restricting or cinching you. So, and it's not going to restrict your movement a ton, but you'll still get that look without it being super uncomfortable. However, she's not really down for that, I don't believe. Right. Yeah, not down for corset. And another note about corsets at conventions and just being practical with corsets is that you're wearing a corset for eight hours a day Probably. and you are walking around a con floor or you are sitting and playing board games or you are doing whatever you do at a con and you just got to think, okay, when I sit down and play a board game, I don't want to sit, stick straight for yeah. <laughs> a three hour board game that, oh my goodness, my back will be dying. Yeah, I bet. And so I think it was smart to go with the direction of not a corset. Definitely. I think that was definitely good on her part. And especially when we learned more of one of the reasons, not only for comfort's sake of her not wanting a corset, but in her uh, little bio that we had asked her to fill out in the survey, uh, she says, well, you know, it's hard to do a barrel roll in a corset. And I was like, that's totally reasonable and that's a really good note for an original character like oh this isn't an elegant high flute and high society elf that sits around on a chair all day this is somebody who moves right so that tells us no corsic she gave us that and then when we found out she's kind of like a little bit roguish right she's got that like sneaky side but we still wanted to give her a little bit of femininity right of course because you know to me it's like if i'm playing an elf i still want to be pretty i still want to have that pretty kind of look yeah you still kind of want to read elven even if it's not long flowy robes and so we managed to find this one piece that i was like the first it was the first piece i'd seen i'd seen it a dozen times before looking at renfair stuff and it's like 
it's almost like a high low split kind of green crepe dress that looks a little bit more wild but it's not full dress it's meant to be like over pants or something like that but it's definitely movement it's not it's definitely reads elven in my opinion right and we showed her that and she was like yes i like it right now are you talking about the one that has like the belt on it yes with, like the open okay now that we didn't you go with that we d- oh we, that's right we did not end up going with that yes but that, but was, that was first, a very nice one that was our first thought and it did look really cool it did i think our problem was that it, it just wasn't in the size that we needed right and that you know that that'll happens break, that'll break your heart sometimes that's yep. that size stuff or the oh we're out of stock yeah. we won't be available until after your con date rip <laughs> right and that happens, and but I had already prepared for that <laughs> eventuality, so I had managed to find something very similar. It was still green, still split down the middle. It was just a little bit longer, but it was exactly what we needed too. And so she was happy to go with it, and it it, it read more. It's still red elven, right? But comfy elven, <laughs> right? It was an elf on a mission. It was definitely the adventurer elf that is going out and, you right. know, being in combat, being in battles, doing the barrel rolls, being sneaky, <laughs> instead of, I'm just sitting on my chair, you know, enjoying whatever it is. Right. Because there's <laughs> always still do. a little bit of a suspension of disbelief when it comes to elves, in my opinion. It's like, sometimes when they even do have that flowy stuff, you're like, how did they not get tangled up? Because they're freaking elves and they're... <laughs> they can do that. They just, they're you graceful. Know, it's the classic answer. It, because. because. That's all I'm going to give you. Just Because. Yeah, um, but one of the other things that was interesting, and it's an assumption, and this is something that we always have to be careful about, uh, kind of going back to the way that we pictured an elf initially, is when, in her thing, she says that she wanted the art deco detailing of elves, and I initially thought she meant art nouveau, because that's typically, and I'll explain the difference between those Right, Very. because I don't, I haven't done enough research or I haven't looked into enough of Art Deco slash Art Nouveau. I've heard both those terms, mm-hmm. but I don't really you know. picture them. I don't, I can't picture them off the top of my head. I can't find a costume piece that would be like, oh, this is definitely Cost. Art Deco yeah. or anything like that. And see, I can, I can pick that stuff out of a lineup. Like, I just immediately, I know whether something is going to read Art Nouveau and Art Deco. And what the, really the difference is, is, is they're both uh, early 19th century art styles. Uh, art Nouveau was um, usually 1910s to 1920s-ish. Don't quote me on that. It's, it's somewhere in that early areas, and Art Deco was after it. And the main difference between them is Art Nouveau, uh, new art is how that translates, <laughs> Uh, is very... History lesson. Yeah, so this is a little bit of an art history lesson for you. Um, Is actually very influential when it comes to elven design. It's a lot of, like, natural swirls and flowers and pastels and... Would it be, like, the flowing script type stuff? Kind of the flowing script kind of stuff. If you've ever seen Alphonse Mucha, which I'm sure you have and you don't know who that is, but I guarantee you if I show you a picture, you're like, yes, I've seen that before. Okay. Very famous uh, early 19th century... um, uh, illustrator uh but art deco a lot of people would instantly recognize if i say it's great gatsby looking stuff oh, okay that is art deco that was uh, like the geometric type very geometric stuff. golds and blacks and kind of glitzy and but yeah it's a it's a much cleaner it's not so detailed it's not so flowy it's very much the difference between curves and lines is okay. how i think of art nouveau versus art deco so a lot of people um will it's very good for elven stuff. If you look at elven stuff and you look at Art Nouveau designs, you can absolutely tell that a lot of it took from Art Nouveau. And so you can look at... The, so when I when she said that, I was like, oh, she's already kind of had a conversation about it with me before. And she was like, oh my gosh, elves are totally Art Nouveau and dwarves are totally Art Deco. And I'm like, yes, yes, they are. And like, I've always preached that. And like, I'm glad somebody else came to this decision. <laughs> so when she said that in her bio, I was like, oh, she must mean Art Nouveau. Well... Mm-hmm. Apparently not. <laughs> right, yeah. So apparently because, and this was the important little piece that we got out of her, again, she did not grow up in elven culture. So she should not have all of the elven flourishes that you would expect out of Art Nouveau. And didn't she actually say she was raised with yes, dwarves? Yes, so she spent a significant time with dwarves. So right. she did mean Art Deco when she meant what she kind of wanted the flourishes to look like. So I'm like, okay. That is very interesting, and it's it's different. It's very different for an elven character, and there's ways that you can kind of do that. Like when I we didn't get into the jewelry and aspects like that with her, but I was thinking like big 
flat golden earrings or something like that because dwarves are very metal centric. Oh yeah, they're like crafters and they're crafters, um, stonework even. What do you call it? like they do the armor as in the shields and the yeah yeah it's all it's a it's, specific kind of metal work. Well, they do all sorts of metal welders work. and stuff mithril like that. is a big oh, thing that's associated. Armor. That's the word. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> So you could pick up a lot of things that are more like, and especially Art Deco stuff is super easy to find when it comes to accessories and things like that. But um, if you're wanting certain looks for elves or dwarves, I highly suggest you look up anything that has to do with Art Nouveau for elves, for a typical elf anyway, and Art Deco for any sort of dwarves. You will absolutely see the influences immediately, I guarantee you. Um, Interesting. Yep. So one of the other things that we will talk about besides <laughs> that little heart history lesson is one of the things that she expressed too was making sure that certain parts of her body were covered because not everybody is all about like being like, well, we think of wildling elves, you know, and things like that. She wasn't like totally great, but she's like, well, I want my arms covered, mm-hmm. which is a totally fair thing. Uh, and, you know, some people don't want to have, like, their belly showing, for example, or they yeah. don't want to show as much leg, <laughs> yep. or they don't want to have a low-cut dress, mm-hmm. or whatever the thing is that you don't want, even if your reference picture, if you're doing an actual character, or the idea in your mind of your original character involves those things, there are definitely some crafty ways you can get around that. So you can have your arms covered. You can find a dress that will work and still give the same vibe without showing your stomach. Yeah. Or showing cleavage or whatever the thing may be. So what we tried to find to go... Well, we were debating because the dress we found was a, I think, a strappy v-neck. It was a deep v and it had no sleeves, but it wasn't a spaghetti string right and so we were we kind of had this back and forth debate of do you want a cloak type deal or something to go over Mm -hmm. this dress or would you like something that could be worn underneath it that could potentially work yeah we did go through several options right we did find a couple options and one that i pulled up was and and another thing that she wanted to make sure of was that she wouldn't overheat Yes. So that kind of threw the cloak out the window. (laughs) Because obviously you would be sweating up a storm in the summer heat in a heavy cloak. And in a convention center. Exactly. With a ton of people. So that immediately went out the window. Although, hey, if you're going to a winter con, go for the cloak. I love cloaks. I'm (laughs) a huge fan of cloaks. Um, If I could wear a cloak in real life, I totally would. I want to bring it back. I'm serious. Yeah. Everybody just get on board with this and it'll be fine. (laughs) It'll be a movement. Right. Closet cosplay cloaks. Yes. There. We'll market it. Closet cosplay cloaks cult. Perfect. (laughs) (laughs) No, it's not a cult. It's not a cult. We're kidding, guys. We're we're totally kidding. Don't listen to us at all. No, (laughs) we're not winking. So anyway, we move on. So (laughs) the cloaks are out of the picture. And so now we have to move on to alternative options. So I started looking for um, just different shirts that could be worn underneath. And it still seemed to be more of a long sleeve shirt that was winter that would have been too hot. So then I had to scrap that idea. All of the scrapping ideas. Yeah. Trust me, it's done. Well, it happens so many a lot. Times. Don't don't get, don't commit to anything. That's why you again. I'll say it almost every episode. Don't buy a piece before you're done. <laughs> exactly, because you think, oh, this is perfect, and then it ends up not working. Yeah, and you have to return it, and then you know that's a whole. And I'm annoying super process. lazy, so I don't want to do that. No, I <laughs> I do not want to go to the post office six times to return a piece. Yep. So, I found initially a lace shirt so it wasn't it didn't have like a lining or an underlayer it was just a lace detail and it almost was short Mm -hmm. like in the torso so that it wouldn't be so bulky underneath the dress and I thought well this could work Mm -hmm. and Katie did show interest in that option it did look good it it could have read well yeah and were there other options we found I know I kept trying to find something with because here's the thing when you are putting a shirt of some kind under something that's basically a bodycon dress, you have to think about the kind of fabric that is going to go under it and if it's going to bunch up and give a bad silhouette or not lay right or whatever. So I kept trying to find something that was like peasant sleevey looking that would she could put off the shoulder so it would still kind of give that like wildling look and not totally covered up. 
but nothing, they don't really make like peasant sleeves on bodysuits. So it wasn't a realistic option. Somebody do that. I feel but like there's a market for that somewhere. I feel like there is too. The I think Amazon. I actually did find one that did was you? a bodysuit with like a mesh billowy sleeve. Huh. But um, it had like embroidery on it and wasn't really the right style. It just didn't look like it could fit that style. It was more that club wear. Yeah. Which we did talk a lot about club wear. Have we already talked about club wear? Because I We won't. haven't talked about it. You should talk about it. All right. So one of the things that you, you would be surprised maybe to find that on Amazon is I still find some of my best costume pieces on stuff that is tagged club wear. And the reason for that is it is a wild different crazy silhouettes and cuts that you would never think of would be available to you and it's usually really really inexpensive because it's meant to be club wear like you wear it once maybe twice on a good day <laughs> but like it's really good so you have to go in with low expectations you can't expect to i'm gonna wear this cosplay 20 times with this one piece no. however it can be useful for the right costume in the right circumstance it absolutely can be and it's and if you really do want to wear it for a long time, buy a couple. Like Right. Yeah, just buy two or three. I've done I that. mean, if they're five dollars each, come on. Yeah, I bought a, a even a wig. Oops. Uh I bought a wig that I really liked and I just bought two of them because I knew that you know, it's not the most high quality. I know it's not gonna last forever. I I own two Shrike wigs. Perfect. See? Own, yeah, there so it's go. like just if you can budget it, buy two of something if it's cheap. Why not? Absolutely. Because then, you know, you've got a backup if yep, something exactly. happens or if somebody gets crazy at a con and starts a food fight and somehow you end up with egg yolk in your hair. I promise this has not happened. It's just a random circumstance I thought of, but it's good to have a backup wig. I almost thought you were kidding about that. I'm like, wait a minute, did that actually happen? <laughs> no, it actually, it didn't happen. Okay, dang. I kind of <laughs> wanted that story. I can make one up for you real quick. But, it's uh, not the same now. It's not the same now. I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm sorry, I forget you. Sorry. Sorry, guys. So... I think that's a cool thing to, to buy backups. Yep, buy backups. You know, with, with, especially if it's cheap, the cheap stuff, do it. The shirts, I kept searching, and I thought, oh, I cannot remember what I typed. I think I typed, like... Oh, you said, like, Elven Detail Clothing or something Elven like that. Detail Clothing. That was it. Yep. I typed in Elven Detail Clothing. And, I mean, of course, a lot of circlets came up and stuff like that. But I, I scrolled down a little ways, and I found this shirt. And I was like, oh, that's it. That's that's yeah, very, very close. very good. And... Um, the leading into this, the thing with Katie was she also already had boots and yep. belts and pouches, which were one of the things she was like, I want that. Yeah, which and when we got rogy. to talking to her, we were like, well, do you already own anything? She's like, actually, I do. So we saved the expense there, which was great. And we already knew that kind of brown would need to be incorporated in this costume. So we had the green dress. We had the brown boots. We had brown belts and pouches. Well, this shirt was a kind of deeper brown. It wasn't light brown. It was a deeper brown. It had a little um, cross detail at the chest. Mm -hmm. I don't know what you call that. Like an X, basically. It's just like a little bit. Of, it's like a string. Right? Yeah, it's just like a little yeah. string detail. Kind of like it was tied at the top. Yeah, I kind know of like there's you see a word those pirate for it. tops look like. I ugh, I can't describe oh, it. Oh no, I'm gonna say the wrong word. I was gonna say Jacobin, but that's that's a totally different kind of tunic. Maybe you're picturing what we're talking about. If not, there's a link in the show notes so you can actually go look yep. at this top. However, it's got some kind of little detail at the chest, like a little tie detail, but it also had a detail off the shoulder. So yep. it was off the shoulder top, but it had a kind of like wild looking piece of fabric. I believe it was like, it was off the shoulder, but then it had, it kind of had like a gap and then it had a tie. Didn't it? Something like that? Something like that. We don't have it Basically in Basically not, yeah. Uh, but <laughs> not, uh, it was, it gave us the off the shoulder look that we wanted. It was the color and the scheme that we wanted. And it was a covering of the arm. Yeah. And it was, again, it's another example of we didn't think this existed. And then you Google or you Amazon search exactly what you want and- It'll come up. Somehow there it is. So, again, always just type in the most idealistic thing and you will be surprised. Sometimes it's right there. <laughs> right. You have no clue it's out there and then there it is all of a sudden. So, that's the shirt we are pr that Katie's probably going to go with, although she may find a better option out there. She may. But um, I thought that was pretty close for what we were looking for. And it definitely gave that wild elf feel, which is yes. what she kind of told us she wanted to focus on. It was more wild than more put together. 
Yeah, and but we still wanted it to read Elven, and I feel like that's going to still read very Elven. It's still got a hint of elegance to it, but it's definitely more Wood Elf than City Elf sort of exactly. thing. Exactly. And that's that's kind of where we were going with it. And I don't think she actually discussed a wig at all. Oh, I don't think she did either. No, but Katie's she might got be gorgeous her. hair, she so does. she may just be using her own hair. I would not, there's no reason for her not to use her own hair, because it's pretty much perfect for what she's going for. That's the thing. If I could use my own hair, I would do it, because... You're saving yourself what, 30 bucks. Yeah. Usually, which is great. Um, I do really quickly want to mention, because this is an elven character, I want to mention elf ears. Oh, yes. And so I love wearing elf ears. And the reason I love wearing elf ears is because I found a really great company who does elf ears, and they're called Aradani. And I have seen them at cons, I have seen them set up at Ren Fairs. So you can actually find these semi-locally if they are a vendor at you know your local con however i believe they do sell on amazon and they have their own site and they have different sizes of elf ears and they look very realistic in the way they are done by the way this is not a plug we were literally just like (laughs) i just love this company they're not sponsoring us our donnie please sponsor us (laughs) um we ju- I'm just a fan of this company. I have been since the first set of elf ears. I have a ha- I own two sets. I believe I own the wood elf set and the normal elf set. I think they're called anime elf ears. However, what I was talking to Katie about and showing Katie on Aradani's website are they have large anime elf ears. Yeah. And granted, they are $30, so they're a little higher in price than the smaller ones. Very reasonable. But they come out from your head in a sense that like they are very very noticeable as elf ears where the other ones you kind of have to tuck your hair very carefully for Mm -hmm. them to even be noticed so i was looking at them for like the 20th time because i have like fawned over these elf ears for who knows how long and i've kept saying i'm gonna buy those one day i'm gonna buy those one day and when i was on the site last night i just bit the bullet and bought them and you can get them on amazon they're not sent by prime I bought directly through the Aradani site. Mm. However, the cool thing was that this morning I got a notification saying they had been shipped. I ordered these yesterday. I was very impressed with how fast they shipped these ears. And the cool thing about these is you can get them unpainted. Or if you pay five extra dollars, you can get them in a light skin tone, a medium skin tone, or a dark skin tone. Which I think is so great. Because like we have said multiple times... I am not artistic <laughs> in the sense that I don't think I could paint an unpainted elf ear to look like a yeah. normal ear. And unless you already have acrylics and all that other nonsense, like it's going to, five bucks. Five bucks. Five so bucks. So I was like, totally worth it to pay the extra five dollars. So I got the light skin tone and that's what my other two ears are in. And it really does look realistic. Everyone yeah. that has seen my other elf ear pairs say, Oh, wow. Where'd you get those? Because the way these elf ears work is instead of being the kind that you just kind of put over uh, your ear with like the wires Mm. that still show your real ear. That give me a headache. Yeah, that LJ owns and have given her a headache. So they're not the most comfortable ears in the world. However, these slip over your ear. They are made of... um, It's like a silicone, isn't it? It's like a silicone. And they slip over your ear. So they attach right at kind of like your sideburn area in one spot and then around the rim of your ear in the other and how they attach is with spirit gum so you get the spirit gum adhesive and you can order it alongside your ears i already have some for my previous purchases but you just paint that on kind of like nail polish and stick it in those two places after it's held about 10 seconds they're not coming off unless you pull them off and I'll have to update you guys when I get these large anime elf ears since they are so much bigger than the other yeah. ones I own. I'm curious to see how they will sit. But I have never had an issue with That's these ears hear. falling off. I have never had an issue with them giving me a headache, them hurting me in any kind of way. And then when you pull them off, I just pull the ear <laughs> off. And it's a really weird sensation when you do so. But... <laughs> It doesn't hurt. It's not painful. Yeah. Um, and if you are really worried about doing any kind of thing like that, coconut oil, olive oil. I'm a big person on oils. I'll pretty much like coconut oil and olive oil will solve pretty much every problem in your life. But, exactly. Uh, yeah, a little bit of coconut oil or olive oil on a Q-tip and you just kind of rub it up under there. And that's that's true for anything sticky, wig tape, uh, wig glue, anything like that. We'll absolutely get that off of you. Right. So 
tip of the day. If you're looking <laughs> for elf ears and you have no clue where to start, I would start with Aradani. I 100% recommend them. They are so great. And that's what I recommended to Katie for this cosplay. I thought that it would just really be a really completion pull and pull together exactly what she was going for. And I love the big ears because they read really, really well in photographs. They might look a little bit much when you first put it on, but once you get that wig on or if you have full hair, you're not going to see the tiny ones. Get the big ones. And you can cover the where you glue the ear on. What's a really good tip as well is a lot of people will get those ear cuffs yeah. and put it right over where the fake ear meets your real ear. And you lot. cannot even tell where it meets. It's even really cool. if like you're bald or you don't have wig hair covering your ear. It's just put an ear cuff right there. Yeah, and it covers up the seam and it looks totally in character. It's amazing. I just think it's the coolest thing. Yeah, I can't wait to see her in it. Is she going to be wearing it for mid South Con? We can only hope. And I hope that I get to see other people at MidSouthCon, too. Maybe some listeners. <laughs> yes. We'd love to see you at MidSouthCon. Just a reminder, we do have a booth. Yes. So we will be there at our booth, Closet Cosplay, talking with our listeners, having fun with con goers, oh enjoying gosh. the atmosphere, cosplaying ourselves. So Yeah, come see our cosplays. Come give a suggestion for cosplays. And even if you can't manage to make it to the convention... We're a little hurt, but we understand. <laughs> but definitely drop us a line on our through our show notes uh, on the suggestion form. Give us some suggestions, and we will be so happy to see them through with you. Yeah, absolutely. Suggestion form, guys. We love it. You love it. Fill it out. <laughs> and also, I think we totally forgot to mention... I hope you guys had a good Valentine's Day. Oh, yeah, Valentine's Day, you guys. I will have just gotten back from my glamping, so I hope everybody has a good Ooh, time. glamping. <laughs> no cosplay there except sweet bathrobes yes <laughs> we will have it's my husband's birthday is on valentine's day so i'm sure we will be celebrating some kind of way and i hope that your valentine's day was either filled with love or that you completely revolted and hated everything that day and singles awareness day absolutely <laughs> absolutely we support you either way you decide to go <laughs> that's right but until next time you guys have a good singles awareness week <laughs> right Enjoy yourselves, and uh, we'll see you next time on this podcast right here. Bye.